In this video, I'm gonna talk about a new way for voids to form inside concrete. My name is Tyler Lay. I am a researcher, a professor, and a concrete YouTuber. Yep, I make these videos for you, my concrete freaks. If you wanna learn something new, then you have to look at things in a new way. That's what this video is all about. We tried something new and we found something that totally blows our mind. If you take concrete and if you cut it and look inside of it, you know what you're gonna see, right? Rock, sand, cement paste, and voids, of course. So where are these voids from inside of our concrete? Well, one reason could be poor compaction. You make concrete, you try to get all the air bubbles out that are trapped inside of it as you placed it, but maybe you miss a few and it looks something like this. You could also get air entrainment. We actually add a soap inside concrete called an air entraining admixture. You whip it into the mix. I'm gonna talk about it in other videos that I've seen before. And it forms these bubbles that are key for freeze thaw durability. Another reason is the hydration products do not fill all of the space inside of the hydrated cement paste. This is a cross section of hydrated cement paste and you can see inside of that cross section, these black areas, that's the empty space where things just didn't grow in it. And before this work, I would have said that these are the reasons why. But is there another reason? Yeah, there is. We went to Argonne National Labs. We did something called fast x-ray tomography. It's in Chicago, Illinois. It is a sweet place, not only good for good pizza, but for good research experiments. We use this technique where we take our sample, we place it on a stage that can rotate, we bombard it with x-rays, we take pictures of it, and we bombard it and take different scans from different angles, and that forms a 3D structure called a tomograph. If you've had a CAT scan done to you, ladies and gentlemen, you have lived through a tomograph. We're using a one micron pixel size. Yeah, one micron pixel size. Every pixel is 1 50th the size of a human hair. Every scan takes about five minutes. That's why it's fast. We've scanned from 30 minutes to 16 hours. When I label something called OPC, that means Portland Cement. When I label something called MC3S, that's monoclinic tricalcium silicate. Yeah, say that three times fast. That is a synthetic cement that is used to model Portland cement and no air entrainment was used for any of these experiments. Everything was cast in a coffee straw. Yeah, these one little bitty one millimeter diameter so straws. And this is what the data set looks like. We have a 3D scan of the coffee straw full of cement paste in the upper left. We show a cross section and then a zoomed section and we're gonna zoom in even further. And what we can see in there is these black specks on the left, that is air filled space. That's place where there's just air, not water, just air. And we've made them white by using computer vision on the right hand side that can help us track us and see how these things change over time. Now I'm showing the total volume change of these voids. This can seem a little startling, but don't worry. I've got a lot more data coming. I'm showing the volume change on the Y axis over time on the X. And you can see the volume of the voids go up, then they go down, then they stay the same. This is not what I would have expected when I started this experiment. Now, if we use normal cement paste, this is what happens. If we use the same cement paste using de-aired water, ah. say, why would you use de-aired water? More on that later in the video. Things don't change that much. Now, if we look at a lot of different mixtures from a lot of different cements, they all do the same thing. The air volume goes up, the air volume goes down, then it stays the same, but there seemed to be something magical happen here around two hours or so. Also, if you might say, whoa, maybe what you're seeing is chemical shrinkage. That's where as the cement reacts, it actually sucks up water. And some people have thought that that might form these voids. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no chemical shrinkage going on. That's what this plot shows. Here is the amount of chemical shrinkage, and there is at 12 hours, 14, 16, 18 hours, but at our magical two hour time period, not much chemical shrinkage going on. If we plot that same volume change that I'm showing here in black versus the calorimetry curve, that's the amount of heat given off as the cement 
reacts and hydrates, you can see they kind of line up. You can see that right around the two hour magical time period, as the void volumes go up, right as the voids start to go down, look at the heat, look at the heat. The heat is going up. And right about five or six hours when things get to the tippy top here, things get stiff and hard, and that's when the voids stop changing size, probably because things get hard, right? So in summary here, the void increase in size over the first two hours, then start to decrease, then they stay about constant for the next five, after about five hours. The chemical shrinkage is totally negligible during this time, and this is not what I expected. This is kind of like a, what? Now let's watch these voids. Now one of the awesome things is, is we have the 3D data that we can see what's going on. There's a lot going on in this image. Let me explain it to you. The top here is the raw scan showing a cross section. To the right of it, we've made all the voids white so it's easy to see. Below it is a 3D map of all these voids inside the cement paste. The green ones are the smaller voids. That's also the smaller volume. The red ones are the larger voids, the larger volume, and it is a color scale in between them. In the upper right hand corner here, I'm showing different void size ranges and then the volume of each one of those voids. In the lower right, I'm showing the total void volume change and the calorimetry curve, and in the bottom, I've got the time. I'm gonna show this movie twice, cause it's so awesome. Now over time, we have these voids to begin with that are probably caused by compaction. You know, you can't ever get all the air bubbles out. Now over time, we start to see some of these voids change a little bit. They, they seem to be growing, and then all of a sudden, pa-pow, voids come from nowhere, and they're all over the place and then they keep increasing, increasing, and then they start to decrease in volume, all right? And then they stay about constant in size over time. I mean, isn't that beautiful? All right, let's watch that again as things start. We have a few voids, right? We have a few more forming, a few more forming. If we look at the upper right, these voids that are forming seem to be forming in the mid-size range. And then we have the pa-pow moment. Ready? Pow. Things go up, mainly mid-size voids, some smaller size voids. Now let's watch this upper right-hand curve over time. Because what you're gonna see is the mid-size voids are gonna go away and the small size voids are going to increase. And then it stays constant for the time after that. Totally awesome, right? Mom might say mind blowing. Yeah, blow your mind. What can we say about this? In the first 40 minutes, there are a few large voids that are probably caused by consolidation. At about 60 minutes or so, the void volume explodes. There's about a 20 times increase and a large number of voids that are smaller, less than 200 cubic microns appear where they're previously not present and they're pretty well distributed. Between one hour and three hours, these 150 cubic micron voids decrease in size, that's the mid-size voids, and the smaller voids, the 15 cubic micron or so voids, start to increase. And the final void structure was well distributed, mainly formed of these 15 micron cubic voids. Has anyone in the world seen this before? Well, we're lucky because in this experiment, from Cement and Concrete Research, LaRue and his research team showed where they were measuring this is the chemical shrinkage and autogenous shrinkage change over time. That's the same stuff I was talking about before, where the reaction sucks up water. And they could see over the first six hours, they didn't see much change. But they were also using something called acoustic emission. They were listening with sonic ears to the concrete to try to see what was going on. And they saw all kinds of bubble formation, right at about when the magic time period, right after two hours, the same time when we saw them in our experiments. So what happens in the de-aired sample? Remember that one I showed you earlier? Well, guess what? In 3D, nothing, not much at all. I'm showing equivalent time periods between the Portland cement system with non-de-aired water versus the Portland cement system with de-aired water at the top. And we can see here when the magic explosion happens, not much is going on. Later on when things get smaller, not much is going on de-aired water changes things. So with de-aired water, we have almost no change. With deionized water, lots of change. This suggests the air formation 
is totally related to the dissolved air in the mixing water. So what the heck is causing this? Well, have you ever filled up a glass of water and then like put it on your nightstand and let it sit there overnight? You know, maybe you want to drink water in the morning and you don't want to get up. Have you ever noticed that when you fill the glass up, there's like not very many bubbles in it, hopefully almost none. But then over time, there's bubbles. Where do those bubbles come from? Well, that's dissolved air that was in the water. We pump our water. We use pumps to move it from place to place. When you pump, you pressurize it and you dissolve air in that water, especially if there were air bubbles in the pipes with it, that some of that air will dissolve inside of the water. So what the heck is happening inside concrete? I think the same thing. The same thing about this dissolved air in the water and it coming out over time. The same thing's happening in your concrete, but the mechanisms are a little bit different. I showed you this curve before. This is where we showed the voids went up, then they went down, and it seems to line up with the calorimetry curve. Well, in to the left of this line, ions are increasing. That means things are dissolving. That means more and more things are swimming around in the water. And then after this magical two hour time period, when heat starts to go up, the ions are decreasing. I think that's a killer clue. The water is gonna contain some of this dissolved air. The ion concentration in solution is going to increase during this first period. That means as the ions go up and they start to swim around on the water, that water can't hold as much air. So it, the air gets less soluble. That means more air bubbles form. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a thing in science called exolution. If you purely calculate how much air should be dissolved in that water, the volume is about 1.6%. We measure in our experiments, the amount of air that forms is 1.4%. I'm gonna link to the papers below so you can check out the calcs for yourself. But as ions are consumed, this is after the curve, after the two hours, as hydration products are forming, as ions are leaving solution, then they're not going to inhibit the air. The air are going to dissolve back into the water and the air bubbles are going to go back down. That's why it goes down on the back side of the curve. And this is the volume decrease that we see as the hydration products are forming. So what does this mean? It means that the ionic strength, how much ions are dissolved in your water is important right? And it creates these air filled space in our microstructure. And these pores will impact our durability, our strength, and lots of other properties about the paste. But if you reduce the ion concentration in the pore solution, then you could reduce the void formation. But how the heck would you do that? Well, you could use de-aired water, but we wouldn't use that in normal concrete. But what if you replace some of the cement with fly ash or with limestone? just limestone dust, and we did it in these experiments. And look, this is the straight Portland cement. It goes up, it goes down, it's flat. These are the ones with fly ash and with limestone, not near as much. Why? Because we've removed some of the cement and we've put this other material in. So the pore solution isn't as active. There's not as many ions swimming around, so there's not as much air that comes out of the solution. So the 20% fly ash and limestone show less void produced during hydration. This could lead to different properties for these mixtures. This could lead to reasons why these are important for changing the properties of our concrete. So how does this impact our concrete? These voids are likely forming in our concrete and they're gonna decrease our durability and reduce our strength. This is another reason why we wanna make sure we vibrate our concrete during placement. This work shows that air dissolved in water used to make concrete creates voids inside of that concrete. If you use de-aired water, then this won't occur, but that's kind of insane. If you dilute the amount of cement in the mixture, then the voids will decrease. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like this. I know it's a little bit different, more heavy on the science. I love me some science. Please 
Give me a thumbs up to this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below. Did you imagine that this could happen? Is there another reason why these voids could be forming? I've thought a lot about it. I wanna hear what your thoughts are. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Take care and see ya! Yeah!